Hello grade 12s, in today's video we're going to learn how to calculate net work. So in the previous video we learned about what work is, how to calculate work, we also spoke about positive and negative work. So if you've missed those videos you want to go check them out, links in the description box below for the playlist. But now we're going to be talking about network, how to calculate it, it's very very important, you're going to want to watch the entire video to get all the teacher tips and tricks. Let's go! Why do I care about calculating net work? Now in previous lessons in this playlist we learned about work, we defined work, I showed you the formula for work. We also spoke about positive work, negative work and no work. Now we're moving on to net work, okay? Net work or resultant work. It's basically just like net force or resultant force. Remember when we did net force and resultant force in Newton's it was like the overall force. So for example, if two people are pulling a box to the right, 10 newton and 30 newton, and one person is opposing them, pulling 5 newton to the left, I could ask you what is the net force. So there's three forces acting on the box, but the net force or the resultant force is the overall force. So if I have 10 plus 30, I have 40 newtons going to the right, 5 newtons going to the left, it was 40 minus 5, so 35 55 newtons going to the right. That was the net force, the overall force. It's the same thing, same principle, but this time with work. What's the overall work? What's the net work? What's the resultant work? As you know from the previous videos, we could have the work done by an applied force, so work done by F applied going to the right, but work done by friction going to the left. Overall, I could ask you what is the net work? So it considers the work done by all the individual forces. Network is very, very important because we use it in the work energy theorem, which is stated below. I have a separate video on this. Um, as I also mentioned, we can also just straight up ask you what network is. So instead of asking you the work done by friction or the work done by applied force, I can ask you what is the network. Then you just have to work out using one of the two methods that I'm going to show you in this video. And again, we need it for the work energy theorem. So knowing how to calculate network is very, very important. And by the end of this video, we're going to just do a basic example on how to calculate network. And it's going to be the network on the block. So the network done by the forces, done by the net force essentially, on the block. Now, as you can see, there are four forces acting on this three kilogram block above. We have the normal force, the force of gravity or gravitational force. We have an applied force and a frictional force. Each of these forces do work on the box. So you get work done by the applied force, work done by the frictional force, and so on. And what I want you to calculate is the net work done. So it has to, you know, it has to include the work done by all the forces. It has to consider the work done by all the forces and then give me an overall value for the net work. There are two ways that we can do this. There are two ways that you can choose to do it in your exams. The one way is by considering either the sum of the work done by the individual forces, so that I'm going to call method one, or method two, where we first work out the net force and then we use one work calculation to get the net work. I'll be starting off with method number one, which is where I use the sum of the work done by the individual forces. So as I mentioned, there's an applied force, so there will be work done by the applied force. There's a normal force, so there will be work done by the normal force. There's a FG, gravitational force, so there will be work done by the gravitational force. And there's a frictional force, so there will be work done by the frictional force. Now, if you can recall from the previous video, the formula to calculate work done by a force is W is equal to the force multiplied by the displacement, so how far the box moves or how far the object moves, cos of the angle. And remember, the angle is the angle between the displacement, so the direction in which the box is moving essentially, and the force in question. So for this method, we have to do this little formula for all four forces. So this is essentially what your calculations will look like. So it says here the sum of the work done by the individual forces. This is why you see plus signs, because sum means plus. So the work done by that force plus the work done by that force plus the work done by that force blah 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 gives me the net work. So for this box it'll look like this. So I've written my formula for work. That's the formula as it's stated on the formula sheet. Important to write that down somewhere. 
And then I've got the expanded formula for work done by gravity, work done by friction, work done by the normal force, and work done by the applied force. So for each of these, I'm going to fill in the associated values. When I add them up, so when I get the sum, it's going to give me the net work. Now, important thing, and we discussed this in the previous video, is if the force acts at 90 degrees to the displacement, okay? So if theta is 90, because remember theta, this angle, is the angle between the force, so let's say the normal force, and the direction in which the box moves. So say the box is moving to the right, that angle is 90. If that angle is 90, cos of 90 is zero. So the work done by forces that act perpendicularly to the displacement, so the work done by the forces that, forces that act at 90 degrees to the displacement, so in this case it's the normal force and Fg, because they're going like this, and the displacement's going like this, 90 degrees. The work done by those forces are zero. So for the normal force, this term over here, and for Fg, I can substitute in a zero. Zero work will be done by those forces. And just to clarify, in this example, the box is moving to the right. So the displacement will be going to the right. So if we take a look at the forces that I was speaking about in question over here, we've got Fg pointing straight down. The displacement is going to the right horizontally. So the angle between them is 90. Same thing with the normal force is going straight up. Displacement's going to the right, so the angle between them is 90. So if I put it into the work formula, we've got cos 90, cos 90 is 0, anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So these two forces, this one over here and this one over here, do 0 work. So what I can substitute in so far is my net work is equal to the work done by the gravitational force is 0 plus work done by friction. Now, I take my frictional force, I'm going to put it in brackets, over here it says my frictional force is 1 Newton, 1 Newton, so over here I'm going to say 1, multiplied by displacement, how far did my box move? It says here that my box moved 2 meters to the right, so I'm going to put a 2 in over here, and now because of the angle, remember the angle is the angle between the displacement and the force, so the displacement is going to the right. I'm going to draw a dotted line like this because it's not a force, it's displacement. Displacement's going to the right and look which way friction's going. Always in the opposite direction of the motion, to the left. This is friction. The angle between these two here is 180. So it's going to be cos 180. This term over here tells me the work done by friction. Notice how I don't substitute in the frictional force as a negative because cos 180 is a negative. So this is already adding the negative. We don't substitute friction in as a negative when dealing with work. Then remember the work done by the normal force is also zero because of the direction. And then last but not least, the work done by the applied force. So you take the applied force, which they gave to me in the question. The applied force is five Newton to the right, as we can see on our diagram. So that's five. The displacement is still two meters. Displacement must be in meters. And now cos, what is the angle? Well, my displacement is going to the right and my force is going to the right. My applied force is going to the right. There is no angle between them. So my angle is zero. And you should know that cos of zero is one. Now, if I type the sum into my calculator, I will then get the net work. And I get 8. Remember, work is measured in joules. It is a scalar, so it doesn't need a direction. The network is 8 joules. And that does make sense because the normal force did zero work on the box. If G did zero work on the box, it looks like the applied force did 10 joules of work, positive work. It added energy to my box, and my friction did 2 joules. So 10 minus 2, essentially. Now, the second way to calculate net work is personally my favorite, and it is to use net force. In my opinion, this is a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, but it obviously depends on the sum. It depends on the situation. Remember, work can be calculated using this formula. W is equal to F delta X cos of your angle. Your angle is the angle between the force and between your displacement. Now, 
we can adapt this work formula to calculate the work done by whichever force. So I can use it to calculate, as you saw in the previous question, the work done by the normal force, the work done by the frictional force, the work done by gravity, and so on. I can also adapt this formula to calculate immediately the net work. So net work, if I want to calculate net work, I need the net force. So F net, delta X, cos theta. Now what this says over here, it says if we use this approach, theta, so the angle, will either be zero degrees Celsius or 180. And the reason for this is as follows. Either your net force will be in the same direction as the motion of the box. So for example, if the box is moving to the right like this, your net force, so that's your displacement, your net force might be in that same direction. If your net force and your displacement are in the same direction, the angle between them is zero. So theta will then be zero. Another scenario is the box is moving this way, so delta x is that way, but if net is acting in the opposite direction, the angle between your two things now is 180. So a scenario where this might happen is, for example, if you are hitting the brakes when driving a car slowing the car down the net force might be to the left but your car is still going forward so think about it when you hit the brakes or you, if you're driving in a car and someone hits the brakes the car is still moving forward but it's slowing down the net force is most often most commonly going to be in the opposite direction then your theta is 180 so if you use this approach theta can either be 0 or 180 but in order to use this approach you first need to work out the net force. This takes us back to Newton's laws. In our question that we're doing today, it's quite simple, but this obviously can be more complicated if the object's on a slope or if there's two objects and all of those situations. So in this example, I need to ultimately fill out this formula over here. W net equals F net delta x because of my angle, I will get back to this. I first need to work out net force. So, net force acting on the box. Remember, F net, it depends on which way the box is moving. F net, I am working out the net force for the box in the horizontal direction. The reason why is because the box is not moving in the vertical direction. The two forces acting in the vertical direction are the normal force and gravitational force. And those two added together should give me zero because the box is not moving in the vertical direction. So it's kind of like F net in the vertical direction or in the Y direction is equal to the normal force plus FG. Together, those should give me zero. I don't care about that. I'm not working with that. The box is moving to the right. So I only care about the forces acting left and right. So the net force will be worked out using these two forces. The applied force, so I'm going to say F applied plus my frictional force. Remember, going back to Newton's laws, and I have a huge playlist on Newton's laws, by the way, if you need a recap on that, we need to choose a positive direction. So I'm choosing to the right as positive. The applied force is going to the right. So, and it's got a magnitude of five Newtons, so it's going to be positive five. Frictional force is going to the left, so it's going to be plus minus one. So 5 minus 1 is 4 Newton to the right. That's my net force. Now that I have net force, I know that my net force is going to the right because it's a positive answer and right was positive. So my net force is going to the right. That's F net. My displacement is also going to the right. So what would my angle be in this formula over here? My angle would be zero because they're both going in the same direction. So how we would do this is we would say, well, the net force is four Newtons. So I'm going to substitute a four in. How far did we move? We moved two meters and then the angle is going to be zero. So cos zero. So four times two times cos zero, eight joules. And that is exactly what we got when we did the other method. Okay, so you can see why I like this method. But obviously, in order to use this method, you need to be able to calculate net force properly. So you're going to have to go over your Newton's Laws videos. I will do more complicated network examples. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. So 
subscribe for more physics, math, chemistry, all those videos. And I can't wait to see you in another video very, very soon. Bye, everyone.